Hello, aspirants. Looking at current affairs for 25th Jan. The news items that we have picked up from the Hindu are these 15. We'll look at them in detail. The first one, Center seeks to withdraw its Jalikattu notification. So the January 7, 2016 notification allowing Jalikattu has been asked to be withdrawn by the central government. So this was a notification given exactly a year ago. So that time, the central government wanted Jalikattu to be allowed because Supreme Court had banned Jalikattu. So it was the 2014 Supreme Court order in which Jalikattu was banned. So to provide an exception to this, this notification of 2016 had come up. So this notification has been heard on by the Supreme Court. Even you should remember, we have just done a few days back that the Attorney General of India, Mr. Rohatki, he had asked, center, asked the Supreme Court to delay the judgment on this notification by a week, saying that we are talking with Tamil Nadu, passions are running high in Tamil Nadu, we are seeing public protests there. So, the central government and the state government are coming up with a way out from this. So, that is why the Supreme Court then had agreed to delay the judgment. And now the central government is asking the Supreme Court that we want to withdraw this notification of 2016 which Supreme Court is hearing. So then there will be no hearing on that matter only. So this, why is it doing so? It's saying because the Tamil Nadu Assembly is now passing a law to allow Jalikattu to take place. We saw it was an ordinance which was promulgated and now since the Assembly will come into, uh, is functioning. So then the amendment bill has also been formulated. So, this is Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, Tamil Nadu Amendment Bill of 2017. As Prevention of Cruelty to Animals falls under concurrent list, this bill falls under concurrent list, the central government's consent is required. So, this bill of the state legislature is before the president. So, the president has to give its approval, then the state legislature can pass it. So, looking into this matter, central government is now saying that the notification is not, is not required and we are planning to withdraw it. So, this is what has come forth before the Supreme Court. So, we will see now what will be the Supreme Court's stand on this because it, is, it has first of all banned Jalikattu. Second, it is looking into the judgment on this notification of 2016 which will now be withdrawn. And then this new bill will come up. So, maybe the Supreme Court wants to adjudicate on this bill too. So, we will see what will be the further developments here. The next news item is Supreme Court rejects plea to put off BCCI panel appointment. Another request made by the Attorney General of India, Mr. Mukul Rohatki now, is that the Supreme Court has asked for appointment of a committee of administrators to run the BCCI. We have seen that they have asked, Supreme Court has asked BCCI present office bearers to step down and a separate committee of administrators would be appointed. So now the Attorney General means the advocate for the center is asking the Supreme Court that you delay this process of appointment for at least two weeks. So, this is saying that government is planning to bring up a legislature or an executive action. Notification would be brought out to provide some autonomy. It says some autonomy to various sports associations against external intervention. So, Supreme, so legislature executive will take a stand, will take some action. So, it's asking Supreme Court to step back. So, that's what we understand from this. So, of course, the Supreme Court has rejected this. It said that we will not do any such thing. The committee of administrators would be appointed. It has said center is allowed to give their names. You suggest the names to the committee for who should be appointed. But then we will not take into consideration any member who is over 70 years of age as this is not allowed under the Loda panel recommendations. Above 70 years, members cannot be appointed. So, that is what has happened right now. Already we have seen that other sports persons have also from other sports fields have also asked that the Lodha panel reforms be provided for their sports as well too, for national sports federations, associations, for various sports as well. So central government, the legislature executive is also now getting into action. So we'll see what will be the further developments here. The next news item is 69% of political funds from unknown sources. So, this is Association for Democratic Reforms. It has conducted a survey and an analysis on the political funds. And it has seen that 69% of political funds come from unknown sources. The source is not revealed. So, it says that between 2004, 5 to 1415, for a decade, the amount of income of national and regional political parties together has been 11,367 crores. And the highest is for Congress. So, out of this, 69% of all of this is from unknown sources. 
Bahujan Samaj Party is one political party which has 100% of its income through donations from unknown sources. So there is a provision that donation less than rupees 20,000 need not be you know, provided, did not have to provide the source as such. So this is there that BSP has not reported any donation above rupees 20,000 in the past 11 years. So that is what has come out through this finding. Some recommendations made by this Association for Democratic Reforms is that there should be full details of all donors to be made public, for, made public, available in public so that an RTA application can also be brought in on that matter. So this is one aspect it requires. This is there in various countries like our neighbors, Bhutan and Nepal, European countries like Germany, France, Italy, US, Japan also have these provisions. So that is there. It says that in none of these countries, it is possible for almost 75% of the sources of funds to be unknown. So in our case, even 100% fund is from unknown sources. We don't know the source. So this is not possible in these countries. So India should also have such provision that sources have to be made available through in the public domain. It should be open in the public domain. So this is there. Also another provision is that which can be added, a recommendation is that any organization that receives foreign funding should not be allowed to support or campaign for any candidate or political party. So if a foreign funding organization is not, should not be allowed to support. So that is also there, that foreign funding, foreign hand should not be there in association to political party. Then next is regarding the election commission's recommendation. It has again reiterated it saying that tax exemption should be awarded only to those political parties which contest and win seats in the Lok Sabha or assembly elections. So tax exemption is 100% tax exemption is there for all the income of all political parties. So election commission had recommended that this 100% tax exemption should not be for all, but only those who contest and win. Then another suggestion was that details of all those who donate above 2000 should be made public. So that details are also not public. So for above, below 2000, there is no need to know the source, name the source. And for above 2000, two sources are named, but they are not in public domain. So they should be made public was also an election commission suggestion, which has been reiterated here. Then lastly, it says that scrutiny of political parties, financial documents should be conducted annually by a body approved by election commission and CAT for greater transparency. So these are some reforms suggested for political parties knowing their sources of income, the, the, the area in which corruption is also dominant. So here also it should all come into public domain and under public scrutiny is what is suggested. The next news item, this is showing the details from the report, how national parties fare, what is their percentage of total income, national, regional and how they have increased from unknown sources and increased over the years. So you can see how that has happened too. The next news item is NHRC issues notice to Tamil Nadu. So here what is important is that NHRC has taken a suo moto cognizance. Suo moto means on its own. Means there need not be a petition coming before it or somebody making an appeal to it. But on its own, looking into the media reports, the NHRC has taken this matter in front of itself. So that is called suomoto cognizance. So this power is also there with NHRC. You should know. So taking suomoto cognizance of media reports, NHRC has issued notices to Tamil Nadu authorities. And this issue which on which the cognizance has been taken is the alleged police excesses on Jalikattu protesters in Marina Beach in Chennai. So where they were protesting against the ban on Jalikattu. So here the police has also indulged in damaging private property. So this has been taken into consideration and authorities have been asked to respond on this unprovoked police accesses by the NHRC. The next news item is India to ratify amended version of Kyoto Protocol. So Kyoto Protocol, we know Kyoto Protocol could not actually be successful because US did not participate in it. But there is an amended version of Kyoto Protocol too which is to be there till 2020. But there is no scope that actually it would be beneficial but to put pressure on developed countries to deliver on climate change commitments India will ratify the amended version of Kyoto Protocol. So this has come in news presently. So this will expire in 2020 but it will not come into effect only because this amend this is Doha amendments to the 
Kyoto Protocol. So this will span from 2012 to 2020, but it cannot come into effect because it requires 144 countries to ratify it. Until now, only 75 countries have ratified it, and we are already in 2017. So this is just a, you know, a, a token way of making putting pressure on the developed countries. Kyoto Protocol actually was for was finalized in 1997. It came into effect in 2005 and it differentiated between developed and developing countries. It, it had two annex to it, annex just to it. That was annex one and annex two countries. So annex one countries were all the developed countries which were having obligations to reduce emissions and the developing countries had no obligations on them. So then this was on the basis of one basis, one reason because of which USA had refused to ratify the Kyoto Protocol and did not participate in it at all. Even Canada had re later revoked. So commitments from Canada, Japan, USA lacking, USA being the second largest polluter after China. So this had a huge impact and Kyoto Protocol could not succeed. That is why Paris Agreement on Climate Change, which we saw, was having no obligations, no obligations from any country. So you give your own commitments. So that was the pattern adopted later. So this was regarding the Kyoto Protocol. So this, you can see, this objective of Kyoto Protocol was in 2005, it came into effect that the industrialized countries should reduce emissions by 5.2% of 1990 levels from this time frame, 2008 to 2005. So Kyoto Protocol is over. From 2012 to 2020, this Doha Amendment of Kyoto Protocol should have come into effect, but it has not. So we are already in 2017, as I said. Some provisions which were there under this Kyoto Protocol were clean development mechanism and this idea of carbon credits. So carbon credits were credits which could be earned for reducing carbon emissions by developing countries, by anybody. So who is reducing carbon emissions in excess of what is ob obligated for them. So developing countries had no obligation. So if they are reducing carbon emissions, they would get carbon credits. And these carbon credits could be sold off in the market just like shares. Presently, the carbon credit prices have come drastically low because the entire lacunae which we see because of amended Kyoto Protocol not in effect. So that is ex expected. But this carbon credits were also a, an innovative way of bringing in climate change and bringing in business with respect to climate change. too. So this was part of this clean development mechanism which was proposed under the Kyoto Protocol and was in effect too. So this is there. This is the Kyoto Protocol, first legally binding treaty to cut emissions. US did not participate. That is there. Then this is regarding the annex countries. Annex one countries, the industrialized countries, and economies in transition. Then annex two countries. So they had for annex two countries were a subgroup of annex one countries which were required to give financial assistance and technology support to non-annex countries. So these non-annex countries were developing countries like India, Brazil, China. They had no compulsory binding targets on them. Then Annex A to the Kyoto Protocol was a list of six greenhouse gases responsible for climate change. And Annex B to the Kyoto Protocol were, was giving the compulsory binding targets to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to various Annex 1 countries. So this was in Annex B. Then the two mechanisms which were there in place under the Kyoto Protocol were emission reduction commitment. So there were binding commitments from the obligations on the developed countries to reduce carbon emissions. And apart from that, there were flexible market mechanisms in place too. So these three flexible market mechanisms under the Kyoto Protocol were joint implementation, clean development market mechanism and carbon trading. So joint implementation was between Annex B countries. They were allowed to have joint implementation and on emission reduction units. Clean development mechanism should be would be between Annex B and developing countries and they can earn CER, Certified Emission Reduction Credits. So this Certified Emission Reductions were the carbon credits and then these carbon credits could be traded. You can buy and sell these carbon credits. So if you are not having your binding commitment fulfilled on your own, you can buy these carbon credits and claim to have worked for that. So this was carbon trading. Then the next news item is Climate change plan to get new missions. So India has this national action plan on assessment, adaptation and mitigation of climate change. Under this, there are eight national missions on climate change. So India has now plan, planned to make it into 11, means three new will be added. So these will be on health, coastal zones and waste to energy. So these eight original ones are, are water, 
green india solar mission sustainable habitat then enhanced energy efficiency sustainable himalayan ecosystem sustainable agriculture strategic knowledge for climate change and now three new added will be health and coastal zones and waste to energy the next news item is improved Pin pinaka rockets test fire so Pin pinaka rockets having a range of 40 km were unguided pinaka rockets originally presently improved pinaka rockets so these are pinaka mark 2 now so original ones are called pinaka mark 1 so they have an improved range too so that range has increased to more than 70 km now plus they are having a guidance system with them too now so this has been presently successfully test fired from integrated test range at Chandipur in Orisha. So this is regarding that. So it has been developed under the guidance system has been developed under RCI Research Center Imara in Hyderabad which is under DRDO. The next news item is in a rare display Tejas to Thunder over Rajput. So during the Public day fly past after many years now a single engine aircraft which has been indigenously developed this is the light combat aircraft Tejas which will fly past so it will have a fly pass done so this it will take off from Bikaner and fly in victory formation over Rajput during Republic Day celebrations so it was after this incident in 1989 that single engine aircrafts have not been used so this now first time will they will be used again after that so it was in 1989 Mirage 2000 fighter crashed while performing maneuvers during the 57th anniversary celebrations of Indian Air Force. So after this, single jet engines are not used because it is said they are at greater risk because of birth hits, birds may hit them or low flying conditions and there is a large public gathering and presence of important dignitaries at such events. So there is these single jet engines can be avoided. But now they claim that these present single jet engines are much more powerful and they can be used for fly pass. And also in the Republic Day Parade this year, we will be, the, we'll be displaying Dhanush, which is the artillery gun by the Ordnance Factory Board developed by it. Then DRDO is going to display the attack system, advanced stored artillery gun system. So these will also be displayed. So Dhanush, you should know Dhanush is the upgraded form of from the Swedish Bofors guns, Avizza guns, which India had procured in mid-1980s and there was this whole Bofors scam regarding this. Swedish Bofors guns. So, this is regarding Tejas here, first indigenously developed light combat aircraft. So, it has the specifications are also provided. The next news item is Ukraine's deputy PM to join Republic Day celebrations. So, we have already seen yesterday that UAE from UAE Abu Dhabi crown prince will be the chief guest as we, at Republic Day celebrations plus also Ukraine's leader this is deputy prime minister first deputy prime minister will also participate in the Republic Day celebrations so India's India Ukraine relations had been at a low because of the Ukraine's war with Russia over Crimea but now it is said that Ukraine wants to approach India again and they, we have also had visits from India to Ukraine of leaders and now Ukrainian leader is reciprocating. So of course it will raise concerns from Russia but this is how international politics goes ahead. So this is Ukraine here you can see and Crimea region you can see down here. So Crimea had a referendum conducted because in Crimea if you look at the uh, population. So, majority of the population, Russian population is around 59%. Ethnic Russians are 59%. Ethnic Ukrainians are only 24%. So, that is why this region has major Russian population and that is why it has been has been a bone of contention between the two. So, historically you can see Crimea was annexed by Russia earlier too in 1783. Then finally, Crimea was given to Ukraine by Soviet Union in 1954. Then it became part of independent Ukraine after the collapse of USSR in 1991. It became an autonomous region under Ukraine too. And finally in 2014 a referendum was conducted in Ukraine for joining Russia in which they approved and then Russia made Ukraine Crimea part of it which was not liked by Ukraine and the conflict emerged. The next news item is Pakistan tests 2200 kilometer range surface to surface missile. So, this is Ababil missile which has been test, flight tested successfully 
and it says that it is capable of carrying nuclear warheads and it can engage multiple targets with high precision so it can defeat the enemy's radars also so we have ballistic missile defense system in place to ensure that the missile cannot be detected and destroyed by this ballistic missile defense the ababil missile has been developed by pakistan it claims it is for their deterrence so this is the missile which is in use then the next missile which was recently in news was the submarine launched cruise missile which is babur 3 which is having a range of 450 km it will be launched from the submarine so this is also been highlighted by pakistan presently the next news item is uk government must get parliament nod for brexit supreme court so this is the supreme court reiterating the high court judgment in uk which had come up earlier by in london that the uk had means the parliament's nod before initiating brexit so it is the triggering of article 50 under the lisbon treaty that uk can trigger its exit from eu but then supreme court has now stated that you can not even trigger article 50 because triggering article 50 after that too it will take around around 2 years for uk to finally exit so the the prime minister ms theresa may she had earlier stated that triggering of article 50 would take place and parliament approval will be going on in the process and finally when brexit is finally exiting the parliament nod would be awaited for but would we would initiate the process but supreme court has presently stated no even triggering of article 50 cannot take place without parliament's nod so quick exit from eu is important from britain now otherwise uncertainty is not good for the country so that's what the government is keen on but parliament not means facing the opposition facing other regions which are not keen on exit like scotland is not very keen on exiting from eu it is also asking for its own autonomy so then these concerns also prevail so we'll have to see how this would be tackled by the present government which even after the supreme court ruling is saying that we'll still stick to the march deadline that by march article 50 would be triggered so let's wait if the parliament in uk gives the nod to brexit or the as the opposition is claiming that they would bring in amendments to the uh, to the brexit uh, uh, act as such too is what we'll have to wait and watch so this is regarding that So it's saying that we will bring 50 amendments to legislation. So this is Scottish National Party. So it's not pro Brexit at all. And it is having independence movements going on in the region. The next news item is can print 16 billion notes a year. RBI Press. So this is Bharatiya Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited, a subsidiary of Reserve Bank of India, which prints bank notes. It has said that we have the capacity to bring. print 16 billion pieces of currency notes per year when operating in two shifts and presses are operating at full capacity so this has come out as a response to an rti which had been filed by the hindu newspaper so it also says that new 500 rupee notes have been printed by both brb and mpl and also security printing and minting corporation of india limited while 2000 currency note has only been printed by this brb npl nmpl so this is through an article guy that news has come out presently after demonetization the currency notes which have been withdrawn from circulation have been around 22 billion pieces of currency notes so we don't know how many have been replaced and that all information was not provided by the printing press the next news item is tax guidelines to target shell companies notified so this is a new notification guidelines coming forth on poem so this is place of effective management so what is place of effective management this is defined under the income tax act as the place where key management and commercial decisions that are necessary for the conduct of a business are made so where, where is the place of effective management that has to be understood so a shell company is generally a company which is only a khokha shell empty company which is established in some other foreign region because of the tax benefits it gets there originally all the operations take in india only but then taxation is not done in india because the company is based in a foreign location where it has tax benefits so to ensure that such shell companies do not operate this poem place of effective management guidelines have been brought in under which it says that a company is deemed to be engaged in active business outside india only if passive income is not more than 50% of its total income 
less means if passive income should be less than 50%. We'll see what is passive income too. Then total assets situated in India should be less than 50%. Total number of employees in India should be less than 50%. Also, the payroll expenses on such employees should be less than 50%. Only then it will be considered as company-based outside. Passive income is income from transactions where both the purchase and sale of goods is from and to associate enterprises within the same entity. So that is income by way of royalty, dividend, all this is passive income. But then it has clarified these provisions will not apply to banking companies and public financial institutions. The next news item is charges on digital payments above 50,000 noted. So this was committee of CMs which was appointed to be, give recommendations on bringing in digital economy. It has recommended that handling charges should be there for cash payments above rupees 50,000. So even it has the earlier recommended that merchant discount rate should be abolished to promote digital payments. So this is recommendation put forth. It has also asked for tax breaks to consumers and merchants using digital modes of payments. So these are recommendations coming. The last news item is Varisht Pension Bima Yojana wins cabinet nod. So this is Varisht Pension Bima Yojana of 2017 which will be implemented through the LIC, Life Insurance Corporation of India for people above 60 years of age and who will get guaranteed rate of return of 8% per annum for 10 years on their interest income. So guaranteed interest would be provided. Any gap in this interest would be considered as a subsidy which would be provided by the government so this is the scheme launched now approved now so this is post facto approval given to this scheme so these are the news items thank you